picture a middle school girl standing outside the wrestling room. She takes a deep breath and walks into the room for the first time. It's already two weeks into the season, and she's finally allowed on the mat. She, need to, she needed to petition the school board to allow girls to wrestle. They needed a reminder from a middle school girl about Title IX, the 1972 law that prohibits sex discrimination in schools. This law forever changed the landscape for female athletes. It unequivocally shaped my life. So she walks into practice that day, and this big bear of a man, Coach Wolf, turns to the team and says, we have a new wrestler. Her name is Taylor, and by the end of the day, she's going to throw me in the lateral drop. And that's exactly what I do. I get an overhook with my left arm, I dig an underhook with my right arm, and when he pressures in, I throw him to his back. <laughs> Coach Wolf made sure that I was seen as no different than any other kid on the team. And from then on, that made a culture of acceptance. And I was a wrestler. Why wrestling? For me, wrestling is like a game of chess with your mind and your body, a creative puzzle that takes every ounce of strength and will to solve. I know this, every part of it is an intense, and it demands a present and focused mind. I love it. Because of wrestling, I walk through life confident in my abilities. This confidence affords me an increased degree of safety. I know that if something is humanly possible, I have a chance, because I've challenged myself in ways that most people have not. Most of my college education was paid through, through, through wrestling. And Wrestling gave me the opportunity to challenge myself at the pinnacle of athletic competition, the Olympics. <laughs> Through wrestling, my firsthand knowledge shows me that gender equality is possible. The shift that the wrestling culture has gone through is proof of this. But it's been a bit of a journey. Not all girls uh, uh, pioneers of girls wrestling were welcomed to the mat like I was my first day. Many coaches and teams did everything they could to get their girl to quit the team. So as a girl, you learn the trick is to never give them a reason to kick you out of the room. You outwork everyone, you never make waves, and you never, ever complain. You man up to find acceptance. But this double standard that you accept as a girl it does a number on your self-worth. Before gymnasts stood up to Larry Nassar, prompt, prompting safe sport legislation, we handled these situations on our own. We avoided, we got wise, but we didn't speak up. The summer after high school, I moved to Colorado Springs to train at the Olympic Training Center, the OTC. They hadn't let yet announce that girls wrestling would be in the Olympics, so the residential program was all male wrestlers. I rented my first apartment, and I convinced the residential team coach to allow me to train with the men's programs. It was a dream come true for a driven 19-year-old who was in love with wrestling to train among Olympians and national team members. It was also a dry run for the OTC to see how women wrestlers would do there. And I represented well. I soaked it all up gaining mentors and friends among the other coaches and athletes. But one day, I misjudged a predator for a mentor. I escaped, relatively unscathed, but thoroughly disgusted. I never talked about this while I wrestled, or while I was competing, or when the women's residential program was opened up. I focused on wrestling. A few years ago, I looked up that man, just to make sure he wasn't coaching women wrestlers. He wasn't, thank goodness. But a young woman had taken him to court for the exact same experience that I had had. And she lost. Perhaps if I had spoken up, her situation would have been different. But it was a different time. And had I spoken up, it would have given more fuel to the argument that women didn't belong in wrestling. 
I sacrificed my voice for opportunity. This paradoxical situation of becoming incredibly empowered and disempowered at the same time is common for women in male-dominated spaces. According to a Cornell study, women in male-dominated fields face these common challenges. Lack of support, feeling incompetent, mistreatment, and lack of a voice. But sport also has the ability to address these. With sport comes the opportunity to give support and protection. But as a pioneer of equality, you must be a warrior. In the early 2000s, much of the wrestling community resented women's wrestling. I think this came from the belief that there was one pot of resources for wrestling, and if you bring women into the mix, you split the pot, taking resources away from men's programs. Women's wrestling was seen as a threat to wrestling. Olympic trials, 2004. I make the first ever Olympic women's wrestling team. <laughs> As an Olympian, I attend a celebration following the trials. Carrie McCoy, two-time Olympian, walks up to me. He shakes my hand and he says, welcome to the club, Taylor. You are an Olympian, and no one can ever take that away from you. Yay, Carrie. That same night, another wrestler comes up to me. He says, hey, Taylor, we wrestled our finals matches at the same time. I know, I exclaim, isn't this exciting? We are both Olympians. With no attempt to hide his disdain, he says, who do you think people are watching? And he turned and walked away. That was not only his feeling, but the sentiment at that time. Women's wrestling did not have the same value as men's wrestling. A quiet reminder that women had less value. I had less value. I've struggled with confidence as an adult. I have physical confidence, but when it comes to using my voice and taking the reins of leadership, I naturally want to defer to that guy or that guy. Studies show that women are judged and judge themselves as being less effective leaders than men, when in fact, they perform higher. For me, I think this was a learned behavior from spending my formidable years in a culture where women were second class, and the leaders of wrestling were always male. But this is not what wrestling is today. Once seen as a problem, women's wrestling is now highlighted, it's celebrated, and the value that women has brought to the sport, it's translating into tangible opportunities and successes, not only for women's wrestling, but for men's wrestling as well. It was women's wrestling that saved the sport in 2013 when both men's and women's wrestling was actually cut from the Olympic Games. By equally distributing the amount of uh, Olympic spots between men's and women's freestyle wrestling, the Olympic Committee welcomed wrestling back to the Games. Girls wrestling is the fastest growing high school sport in the nation. Universities are taking note and utilizing this trend to um, boost their Title IX um, compliance. When I went to college, there was four different colleges that I could choose from. Now, there's over 110 different wrestling programs that wrestlers can choose from. That's right. Women's wrestling is increasing educational opportunities for girls and women across the nation. Increasing opportunities for women to find their voices, finding strength, self-confidence, self-efficacy, while becoming stunning leaders along the way. This is the power of sport. Sport is so much more than a physical activity with wins and losses. In the words of Nelson Mandela, Sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. It speaks to youth in a language they understand. Sport can create hope where there was once only despair. It's more powerful than governments in breaking down racial barriers. It laughs in the face of all types of discrimination. That is my experience. Yes, it was messy for me and the many generations of pioneers, 
but the result is an undeniable cultural change. We have this powerful tool, sport, the power to change the world. In 2019, I traveled to Pakistan on a US State Department mission looking how gender, sport is used to address gender-based violence. Gender-based violence refers to domestic violence, rape, human trafficking, harassment, and more. Although gender-based violence is more, can be directed against men, women and non-binary people are more affected. Before I left for the Middle East, part of the world I had little experience with, I read about the lack of women's rights for women in Pakistan. I thought I would find Pakistani girls to be shrinking violets, held down by the burden of inequality. I couldn't have been more wrong. I am enthralled watching these girls box. The way they carry themselves, their fluid but solid movements. Look at this girl, framed by her black sports hijab. She's got this focused expression on her face with the slightest bit of playfulness. This is a look that I know well. It's the embodiment of confidence. That is the power of sport. Through play comes confidence. Through team comes community. Through sport comes change. These Pakistani girls who have had the opportunity to play sports are articulate, they're wicked smart, and they understand and exercise their rights. They're not shrinking violets at all, because Pakistani sports programs teach women's rights along with ball handling skills. This direct approach to addressing gender-based violence was new to me. Our standard Western approach is to teach sport and trust that female empowerment is part of the lessons learned on the court, or the field, or the mat. This experience in Pakistan showed me that wrestling or sport has an untapped potential to address our biggest social challenges here at home. This understanding came at a pivotal time for me. In the days and the weeks before I left for Pakistan, my community and I had been searching every inch of the Southern Peninsula. We had been looking for Duffy, my childhood friend who had been abducted in broad daylight in the middle of my hometown that had always seemed like a safe haven. This horrible occurrence peeled off the veil of safety as I realized that Alaska has the highest rate of missing persons in the United States. It's three times higher than the second highest state. The World Health Organization estimates that 30% of women across the world experience domestic violence or sexual assault. Alaska's rate is nearly twice as high. According to a 2020 survey from the Alaska Council of Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault, 57.7% of Alaskan women experience intimate partner violence or sexual assault. This is so bad. It's so unacceptable. If we are to build a just and fair world for all, we must address gender-based violence. Because gender equity cannot exist in a world where women are being disempowered through violence. But sport can do this. Major social issues can be solved using sport. In the early 2000s, Iceland's youth were floundering with high rates of substance abuse. This country, in many ways not so different than our state, overhauled its entire system. It built sports infrastructure, funding for facilities, programming, and they invested in their coaches. Within 20 years, they solved the issue of youth substance abuse. Yes, with sport. We even have an organization here in Alaska, Derliger, that aims to use the Icelandic model as primary prevention. We have all the parts, sport, a successful model, and willing leaders. We can tackle our biggest social issues, but we all must lean in. A cross-sector approach is essential. Look at those sitting next to you. Talk to them. Talk to your family and your coworkers, your bosses and your legislators. 
talk, talk to your children's teachers and coaches about using sport to address our biggest social issues. Sport reaches into every community in Alaska. It connects us. And like Mandela says, it speaks to the youth in a language they understand. Our youth are our future. So let's pick up sport and solve the issue of gender-based violence. But we have to do it right. When I stepped back into the sport of wrestling as a leader, I made a promise to myself. I would only encourage girls to join the sport if I was addressing the issues that had harmed me and others. Now, as I slowly but surely find my voice, the next generation of leaders who are raised in a culture that values women, they're finding their voices with ease. Now imagine that same middle school girl again. She steps on the mat and looks to the corner. I give her a little nod as if to say, you've got this. She takes a deep breath to settle her nerves and reminds herself that she is part of a wrestling tradition that has been around for as long as she can, rem as she can remember. She gets this focused look on her face with the slightest bit of playfulness. I know that look very well. Thank you. Yeah.